music, the stuff our hearts are made of. We talk with Walter Maioli. He is an Italian archaeological musician, which means you don't make music with instruments that are from today, but you have researched the past of music. How people all through the ages have made music with beginning stones and, and shells and all kinds of simple, very simple things. Now, that's interesting as an archaeologist. But one of the things that, that amazes me that you found in this old music a new meaning. And what is it? Uh, I think the new meaning is uh, the importance of hearing and uh, rediscovering uh, the quality of the sound. Because uh, in this moment we are uh, flowing in an ocean of uh, horrible sound. And what you mean to go to disco or a concert with loud electronic amplification, we are drowned in this enormous amount of sound. The music you make, like we started with this little, very soft, very small music, it actually might touch us much, much deeper. Huh? Yeah, we need uh, to be conscious the importance of uh, uh, the sound for the hearing and for the brain. So in the last 10 years we discovered something related between the mechanical part of the ear and the brain. And we rediscovered the uh, very, very importance of the quality of sound. Because the uh, sound uh, passed through electronic, it loses some quality of the uh, frequency and the harmonic. But, but the how, natural how, how sound can that be? The company of Sony and Yamaha have not very much they claim that it's more realistic than realistic, and, and yet you say it loses. I don't, uh, I don't tell me I say this, but more the specialist uh, acoustic, they study in acoustic, uh, they tell, of course, because uh, it's not a question of uh, reproduction sound. Speaker, but it's not the speaker, yeah? Yeah, it's not the speaker, but is the, uh, in the case to uh, try to detect the, the, the sound, is so the, the microphone. microphone. The microphone doesn't have the intelligence uh, perception. Yes, because it basically works from the fact that it has one, one point where it takes rhythm, while our ear is, has a strange form. If it would have been as a microphone, it would be like one point, but it has spatial sensitivity. You can hear where the sound comes from, and it has it adapts. Now, this is this understanding better by another, I think it was an Italian guy, De Tomatis, yes? No, uh, it was a French, uh, oh, French. Uh, yeah, French Tomatis. Uh, great uh, audiologist and uh, he studied uh, the importance of the hearing, mm -hmm. listening, and uh, he tried to also for uh, healing the people. And but when you say healing, so he used mm -hmm. the hearing to heal people, but that basically means that he saw a relationship between what we hear and how we hear and we feel and how our body. Uh, yeah, totally, from, uh, from the balance completely to all uh, relation, everything is related uh, to yeah. the uh, sound we yeah. receive. He actually worked with artistic people and children and helped them by uh, what he then called the electric ear. He sensitized them to hearing. But, but is, if, if this is true, Walter, then, then maybe you are right in the modern disco and, and overflow, overload of sound is in fact harmful to our total social and psychological well-being. Yeah, totally, because uh, they, um, they shock the ear yeah. and uh, they shock also the brain. Of course, you have some uh, uh, ecstasy result, but uh, it's like open one door and close the other. Mm -hmm. This, this like, is where you differ in opinion with, with Hans Kusto. He's also a researcher of sound and, and he worked in Amsterdam and he wrote a book, I think, The Cosmic Octave, and he did very deep work on specific frequencies that had a, a mirror that opened up certain chakras. But now he moved into the disco scene, and that's where you differ, yeah? in opinion. No, I think uh, what, uh, what he talked about, the Cosmic of Tav, is absolutely true. There is the great uh, German master, Mario Schneider, was in the 68 uh, teaching at the Jakkunst Institute here in Amsterdam, and uh, he made also a fantastic book uh, 30, 40 years ago, already with ratio micro macro, and the influence totally with the sound is also contained in ancient civilization. It's not something new, the music of sphere, and uh, that, that's why stuff like this. So yeah. what, what, what uh, uh, we know, one rhythm on some rhythm influence on some Mozart music, on other scheme of music, what we're able to bring. Eh? This is also philosophy of music. Eh? 
but uh, the quality of is very, very important. The component of the music is, uh, is a rhythm, boom, boom, is a melodic, mm. but is a sound. And the quality of sound in this moment is or just the sound of the telephone sound come out from the computer. The computer is a fantastic instrument, but in the conclusion, the, the sound of the speaker is horrible. And all the sound electronic is around us is horrible. In conf in Why confront, is it horrible? Yeah, in the confront of the frequency of the nature is not possible to compare. And now let's take a simple... These, these computers or whatever tend to use single frequencies, I believe single frequencies, you know, whatever, an audible tone, especially the telephone, you know, you hear it, it's one frequency. Oh, no, it's some distortion because it is not true. But now compare it to the sound of what you made, like... Well, you, you do that better than, than this, or this. This sounds to me like a telephone, but you say it doesn't. No, absolutely. This, this totally is, these frequencies are, are, are more harmonic or better? Or... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if now we play here in television, the result uh, uh, from, from the speaker of the television, they are completely different, because this, is, for example, they are high frequency, and it's very difficult to product in a way we... It's yeah, yeah, the peop so the people at home don't hear what it really means? No, never. Well, shamans, and, and you know, we know that some traditions, they used this kind of stuff and other, other sounds yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, it's like a shower. This is a, a exactly like a shower in this moment. You make a shower of, of sound. Of sound. Yeah, it feels like that. Yeah, it's exactly. is what they tell me years ago, the shaman from Africa, when, when we check this, they say, wow, they laughing. They say, you know what, we use this? Like you take a shower. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and many people in, in, in Asia, before um, uh, take a shower with water, they take a shower with sound. And they clean in the house, before cleaning the floor, they clean in with bells. And they clean it with sound? The sound. Ah, I see. Now, that, that's, that's interesting. Because, in fact, we have in there, I think, uh, every group of people that does Dreamtime Healing. And um, it is a sort of, you know, it's been around for a few years. I think Oibibio did something with Lying Down Concert. But this is really, it's a Lying Down Concert by shamans. And they come and they use didgeridoos and natural sound and click, 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 mm -hmm. and this and this and bells. And you lie down and you're given a sound shower. They also use, use some smells. but. And the people out of it, and what I see is that they feel like reborn. They are resensitized to their own hearing, and thereby feel really good. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, there is a lot of uh, possibility to use the in people? Uh, the question um, we uh, we need to know much more, because uh, I worked in 25 years with with Aborigines, with Papua from Guinea, Indians from Amazonia. We try a uh, lot of music instrument, but we discover also. Uh, some music instrument is born uh, in Europe and they correspond to the environment of Europe. I keep out again the, the terminology macrobiotic. So I can say macrobiotic music means the, the didgeridoo, uh, aborigines from Australia music instrument, made for in the desert. And that is to play in the desert. And, and you say, uh, that, say the whole environment should be taken in cons consideration before you choose instruments and you make music. Yeah, absolutely. In this moment we rediscover after uh, play Indian music, try to understand Shinto music, every music from all over the world, Gamelan, Gongon. We discover now the our music, the our heritage, the past, what they play the Roman music, Roman musician, Roman time. Yeah, that's Roman is, is very, very important. You can imagine we are totally in the Roman Empire. Now, what, we, what kind of... How can you say something about their music without having heard it? Yeah, but there is the music instrument. There is a lot of uh, description of uh, how the music they use the Roman people. use the unbelievable knowledge about... Uh, uh, this is uh, where archaeology comes in, yes? yes you, 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 you have research and you have found and you have remade instruments that were found in ruins or whatever and then you start making music. This is what you did at the place called Archeon. Yeah. Where for a year you, you performed and you, you helped people understand historic music and prehistoric music actually. Yeah, in Archeon was uh, an experience uh, last year. Uh, we uh, uh, tried to put in life some uh, uh, music but the basic coming from uh, experimental archaeology is one thing important, it's not only one person and I don't have only me 
talking and working because it's too large, too important to understand the different aspect of uh, this uh, matter. Then we are group of people, we call Sauter, is the name of the, our uh, group, and there is uh, Fred Galles is an anthropologist, Franz Severs is a psychologist of music, uh, Vena Simons uh, reconstructed the music instrument, I am more palaeognologist, means uh, specialist in the origin, in the way to produce the sound. Mm -hmm. So we are a group of people, different persons, it's not for Ravestein, this is a woman part also to understand yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the music, the, 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 the woman music. Not and only the, the male energy, but you need the exactly. female energy. And uh, what we discovered was possible to update it in a lot of fields. So one field was just working in the park and uh, using the music to make a culture. Oh, yeah. and, and but in Archeon it was uh, dramatic because in the conclusion the culture disappeared and uh, they want to play in the front of... Uh, yeah, but that's uh, a commercial reason. Yeah, it's a commercial reason. It was not a success. So, um, so. So. But now you're going uh, again in Amsterdam, you have a, not an exhibition, but I would say a performance for a few days coming up. In no, we are busy to organize a series of concerts of uh, music archaeology in Allard Museum and uh, for next year in April, where uh, we try to uh, put in life also a museum, one, one, one place like the, the Alan Pearson is a beautiful museum, so we have the possibility to, to make uh, an event and sound music. And, uh, but uh, the way to work uh, with this uh, is more large. Eh? We work in education, we work in therapy, we work in uh, didactic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think also it's very important to apply this knowledge in the electronic. To tell the electronic people that they should... Well, that's possible today. You, you can take sounds and you can sample them and then make music on those old... Patterns, because that's what you research. You really you look into uh, even bands that have very specific sounds. If you blow on them, or if you do something with them. Yeah, yeah I I joined uh, a group, a great group of researchers in uh, Canada, a Tuning the World, where there is a lot of uh, researchers, and uh, we arrived at the conclusion we need to keep in consideration. The, the better the function of uh, hearing and the ear, mm -hmm. and uh, keep in consideration again the quality of the natural sound. Like uh, we have a collection of 5,000 uh, sound objects, and in this moment. Yeah, wait a minute. Some of these things look very simple to me, like you have in some nuts, basically. Yes? Yeah, but this is the. Of course, um, as we can see, you have a hole in it, and then you, you know, it makes sounds. Here we have all kinds of flutes. Yeah, they are whistles. We They're have whistles. One, uh, one collection of uh, could you, could you? more than thousand whistles. These are little bones from all kinds of animals. So it's possible to experiment all uh, quality of uh, whistles. Yeah, yeah. Now, in, in a way, it. Just to understand, they are really very, very much different sound, mm -hmm. one than another. There is not one whistle is the same than another. Yeah, yeah. So, the old people, prehistoric, you know, people, they must have known. If they went out hunting, uh, I don't know, whatever animals here, or what is this? This is a specific animal? Yeah, this is... And then a, when they did a ritual, team. yes, they, then they, they used that sound. They, yeah. they had a relationship between what they were doing and the sound they used. Yeah. Um, that makes sense, and that's what you call maker biotic, trying to integrate what you're doing into the sound environment. Yeah, yeah. So this is the invention of the music instrument belong to this uh, process. The man uh, discover in the environment the matter uh, producing sound. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, these are all these are pieces of, of uh, what is it? shell. Uh, yeah, this uh, is the arm of the uh, granchio, which is uh, the um, a fish. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. Kreeft, yeah? Kreeft. Yeah? Many, many objects, many, many uh, backgrounds. Um, you talked a little bit about Roman music. Now, um, there were musical instruments before the Roman Romans, were they like, like um, Etruscan? Do we know anything about uh, their music culture? Yeah, uh, there is uh, quite a deeper study about the music of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know uh, the uh, ancestral, Egyptian, Mesopotamic, and the different influence come also from India, and uh, of course the Greek music and the, the, the Trurian and the Phoenician 
and of course uh, the synthesis of all we find it in the Roman time, all synthesis from uh, the ancient civilization and the Mediterranean music, because the Roman they absorb all the instrument, mm -hmm. and uh, so they was able to have a kind of panoramic of the music of the past, mm -hmm. the ancient civilization. If you if you think about it. The, the people in the past, what role did music play in their life? I mean, now there are kids that run around in the Walkman all day, or they watch television, there is sound always. Even we are in a very good place here, but even here, actually, we start raining, but that's what seems to be here. But any house in the city, actually, hears the tram go by, there is sound all the time. Not, not natural sound, but artificial sound. Do you think people in the past would? They use these instruments like once a day, once a week, once a month. What was it? How, what role did music play in their life? Yeah, you have a very uh, specific uh, function, and uh, the sound uh, was uh, was very important because, uh, of course, we we was not uh, in a bombardment of sound. Uh, so very important. Uh, this is the reason because now there is a lot of uh, people with stress and neurotic because they. The, every day they are active. The sound, the active first uh, function of the hearing is not to listen to the sound, is to give the electricity to the brain. To activate it? Yeah, to activate it. To give electricity of the brain. The 60% of the electricity uh, of work in the brain comes from the ear and the 40% from the metabolism. Uh, so, uh, let me see if we need the sound, all, all the time, all the time, all the time, is like we light uh, all the electricity in our body. It's like uh, we, we, yeah, yeah. we keep uh, day and night open the, the light in the house. But this goes back to our animal uh, part, because sound for an animal is very important. He has to listen, and if something is unusual, it has to come into action, the fight or flight. I mean, there's some, something strange, in it, and you have to do something. Either it eats you, or you have to eat it, or whatever. So you say that if there's too much sound in our life, we're too much activated, and too much activation might lead to stress. And our modern man is always saying, huh? so. Do you do you would you say we have to build houses that are more quiet? So no, I, I mean the basic is uh, try to keep a conscious the importance of the sound and the in, and try to uh, make better. It's not a question to defend from the sound, but it's a question to change all the, the landscape sound. Yeah. Oh, whatever happens to us sound-wise, we have to be conscious of. Yeah, yeah of course. Well, that, is, that is also when you pass in the street and there is an unbelievable noise. <laughs> never pass close, never is possible. Great damage. To you. Exactly. So is when, when you see this, <laughs> go around, never pass close. Not more 30 meters, 40 meters is a really... Be careful. Be careful. Also okay. also with, with uh, the headphone. Okay. Don't get too loud because it hurts yes, you. Yeah. Okay, these are practical things. Well, please make a little bit more music to end this program. But music. We, uh, as you have seen, uh, we've uh, shown you before Hans Cousteau with his ideas. Uh, Dil Purse was Bovatone singer, which is the Mongolian uh, chanting. Yeah, uh, uh, natural, voice. natural yeah. voice. And so you give us some understanding about the importance of music in our life and that we have to be careful. Thank you, Walt. Well, shop of uh, Mr. Ogoro in uh, Zandai close to the central station and so Ogoro you have a beautiful music instrument give the opportunity to find a uh, natural acoustic music instrument. This is uh, I don't know what this, these are uh, instruments that came originally from uh, East Africa, but they modified, you know, within West Africa. So this is uh,
this uh, example. You are and this is also guy, yes, with coconut. Like also. This, this one is from uh, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And this is calabash. This eh? is calabash. This calabash. calabash. Made, uh, design from. This is from uh, East Africa. Uh -huh. This is the type they use now in East Africa. This is coconut. Ah, okay. because, uh, like know how much, yes, yeah, because yeah, because you need a small thing to, yeah, to yeah, bring yeah. out the sound. Yeah. So they put this. Yeah. Uh, is, see. Yeah. Plus yeah, this lamella vibrate. Yeah. Know? Also this. Yeah. Uh, to, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. But uh, also a smaller sound because of uh, the, the size of this. And this is another version of it also. The, the, the square one. Mm -hmm. So this is a box but still uh, less sound. See? Now uh, there are other things also talking drums are uh, originally from uh, the Yoruba in Nigeria. But now it's made everywhere in West Africa.